Today, Lori's making pavillon while Florida Senator Darren Soto talks about his big plans for immigration reform. Thanks for staying with us. We're here today with Senator Soto and we're making pavillon. Uh, while we were on break, we put some beer and some beef broth, two cups of beef, beef broth and uh, one beer, and we added some carrots to our beans. So now we're gonna stick this in the oven and we're gonna cook it about an hour per pound. Um, if, you know, if you could open that oven for me, that'd be great. Sure. Oh, and look, we have one done through the magic of TV. How wonderful is that? You want to cook it at about 325 because you really want to braise it. We were, you know, getting ready to talk about uh, immigration. Right. Uh, the state of Florida had an immigration bill that, you know, you really didn't like. Yeah, I helped defeat it, actually. You helped defeat it. So I'd, I'd like to know, um, do you have an idea of what you, what you think uh, we should do about, I mean, because, you know, everybody agrees that illegal immigration is, is an issue. Uh, right. What should we do about it? Well, first, we have to determine whether it's the state or the federal government that's the more proper party to do it. And you got to actually look at the legislation. The first part of the bill would have allowed uh, law enforcement to stop people because they appear to look undocumented. Well, mi gente, many of them may appear to look undocumented even if they've lived here their whole lives. And then the second part was you verify, which I never really had a major opposition to. I do think we do need to make sure that people, particularly in government jobs, are citizens. But if you, if you were gonna delve into the feds a little bit, I'd say we need to deal with a realistic guest worker program, particularly with those in Canada and Mexico who are so close to us, who are coming in and out every day. And we have to have one that acknowledges the reality that those folks are part of our workforce. And, and I, 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 agree with, I would agree with what you're saying, but you know, what, what then is the um, solution for people who don't want to do that and are perfectly okay with you know being on the sidelines and not having to pay taxes or pay into the system that they may be potentially benefiting from well certainly we give a one-year window or two-year window for everybody to register and if they still haven't registered then that narrows the field a lot and then those folks who aren't willing to do anything at any time even though they had an ability to to apply for one of these programs well, we'd have to continue enforcing our immigration laws. There's a lot of folks who, if they could sign up for a program legally, they would do so. Um, but I don't think a realistic solution is self-deportation where people just go back. I mean, that, that hasn't worked at all. And so we have to do something to acknowledge the reality and move on with it. Uh, and for the folks who are left behind, I do think enforcement would be appropriate. Okay, well, I'm going to ask you to help me with this. What I'm doing sure. is I'm shredding this meat. I told you you can get your hands Hey, ready. I'm used to it. Uh, so we're just shredding this meat uh, while we're heating this up. Um, once we get this heated up, we're going to put a cup of onion, about a pound and a half of peeled seeded tomatoes, a tablespoon of cumin, a tablespoon of agnetto, and a teaspoon of coriander. Um, going back to the, uh, the guest worker program, do you think that it's fair that people who... Um, cross the border, regardless of what country they're from. That if they cross the border and jumped, basically jumped in line of people who were outside the country waiting to get in. Because to me, that's the issue. Right. Because there's people who are legally waiting to get in that are doing it the way they're supposed right. to. And, and it kinda, it's kind of like, why do it the legal way if I could just jump the line? Right, and the answer is it's, it's not fair. Um, but if we do nothing, we continue a status quo that isn't sustainable. And so my, my first premise in this whole thing is, listen, if we don't do anything, we're going to still have this go on. And so, and we don't have the resources to just kick everybody out. Well, that's true. So it's a matter of reality. If you're talking about fairness, no, the people who did the process from the beginning should be at the front of the line. But the problem is that same attitude, that same uh, status quo keeps us Dodging the no, issue, no, no. I, and, and, I, and this I, isn't the first time Reagan actually gave amnesty actually to right, well, I, hundreds of thousands of people. And I'm not even talking about amnesty. I'm just talking about giving a year or two for people to register. And moreover, I'm a, I'm a state legislator, so it's about whether it's appropriate for us. Well, do you to think? Do, it, do you think it's appropriate? Well, let me just ask you. Do you do you think it's appropriate? Appropriate because I mean I know this is a um, it's a federal issue. I mean, it's a, it's a, this is an ICE issue. This is supposed to be a federal right. uh, program. Right. 
that um, you know, obviously the um, the federal government is is not not really doing anything. They're right. they're not you know they have a different opinion on on immigration. Right. So, so what do you think? I mean, do you I do you think that that the state should step up? I don't think that the state should be enforcing immigration policy. Okay. And I do think that when other states have gone strict about it, like Georgia, Mississippi and Alabama, they've suffered. There have been millions of dollars in losses to agriculture in Georgia and Alabama and Mississippi, and they're actually changing the laws back because they can't afford it. But if we just tell people they need to leave, then we get the same status quo and we never get to the point of getting folks to register and apply for these guest worker programs, particularly for Canada and Mexico, where a lot of folks are coming from. And Do you think that we have really a have a lot of Canadians? I think we have some. I think we have far more Mexicans, obviously, here because right. it's closer and they traditionally have done a lot of agricultural work. But I do think uh, we do have a decent amount of Canadians and, and Europeans in general. I just think because they're our neighbors are the most logical to, right. to start with for I, a program. I, yeah, I, that's, I mean, that's a, that's a logical way to go about it. If you think things are hot now, they're going to heat up even more when we talk about firefighters and health care. So stay tuned. Coming up next, things become appealing as Senator Soto tells Lori how he helped get new legislation for firefighters in just under the wire. 